Hello everyone, today we're coming to you from Cannonsburg Village, which is a collection of uh, historic old buildings from the Murfreesboro and Rutherford County area, which were all placed here as part of America's Bicentennial Celebration, and we're going to start with the Monkey Woman Bridge. Look at the way this old uh, tree kind of integrated itself into the... Uh, the iron bars of this bridge and when it was relocated here they uh, moved that little piece of the tree with it here's a marker about toll gates in general talking about how at one time all the roads out of Murfreesboro uh, would charge you a toll now this specific bridge was on the old Almaville Road on the west side of Smyrna and I mentioned it earlier it's called the monkey woman bridge because in the 1950s there were all kinds of rumors of or stories and tall tales of people who were driving in and around this bridge and a uh, a creature that looked like a half human half monkey would attack people or jump on their cars or something along those lines and so there probably wasn't really anything ever confirmed about that however i think the person that gave the story the most uh, prominent was a uh, newspaper author from the 1950s who said that he personally was driving across this bridge uh, stopped for a moment and then had this uh, monkey woman jump on the hood of her car and according to the people who heard the story the uh, story got a little bit more embellished every time he told it over the years this bridge originally crossed uh, Stewart Creek over on Almaville Road, but that road has since been uh, changed a little bit, so the bridge is, uh, of course, on the road is no longer at that specific spot. It used to cross Stewart's Creek, but this is Lytle Creek. There was a story in the 1950s that appeared in a local paper talking about how this bridge was one of the most dangerous ones left in the county, and it's kind of helped to uh, make Murfreesboro roads unsafe. But it wasn't torn down until about 1970s when uh, they decided they could relocate it here for free. The bridge is made out of iron and uh, back then still had the wooden board covering that you see here. Although I would suspect these are different boards that were added in 1976 when it was placed here. Here is a marker for Uncle Dave Mason, who was a um, country music star. And the reason it's here is because there is a celebration every summer called Uncle Dave Macon Days. And that celebration is held at this Cannonsburg village. The most famous thing here is the world's largest cedar bucket. Murfreesboro used to be home to a company called Tennessee Red Cedar Wooden Works who built this world's largest cedar bucket as a promotional item in 1893. My mistake, that was in 1887. But in 1893, it was on display in Chicago at the Columbian Exposition and then later went to the uh, World's Fair of St. Louis. At one time, Murfreesboro even was known as Bucket Town. You might see that on postcards from the 30s and 40s. Well, this buckle, uh, the uh, bucket traveled all over the place for many years. It made it to a theme park in Ringgold, Georgia. But in 1976, when this place was being built, the city thought it'd be a great idea to bring it back home. But that's not where the story ends. In 2005, some arsonists decided to torch the bucket unfortunately and uh, it was that's why it's behind a gate right now this is not the original one that was torched but thankfully some volunteers rebuilt it in 2011 now it took six years to do it they wanted to do it right away but it took a while to find some red cedar, cedar planks that were the right size and shape
The original uh, could hold 1,556 gallons, so this one was actually made a tiny little bit bigger at where it could hold 1,573 gallons. So, although it's not the original, it's a little bit bigger than the original, so it still is the world's largest cedar bucket. This place is called Cannonsburg Village because uh, Murfreesboro original name was Cannonsburg. Many of the other buildings that we're going to take a look at today all have uh, descriptions, uh, plaques in front of them. So instead of me reading them all to you, I'm just going to highlight on the marker so you can read it after we look at each thing. This first item is Williamson Chapel and sometimes they leave the front door open so we can see the beautiful stained glass on the inside.
Now let's see if the back half of the Lehman house is unlocked. No, oh, it's locked. Now it wouldn't be complete without an outhouse. Next up is the town hall. Next is the University House. Now we're on the other side, and I like that old clock above the fireplace. So that was something uh, on the sign outside that I'd never thought of before, that a uh, switchboard operator had to be available 24 hours a day. So they put the switchboard in someone's house so that the uh, switchboard operator could connect you at any time of day. Let's go see the other side of the room.
Next we have the schoolhouse. Next we have the Ellis Gray Mill and Grain Company. This one dates back to 1830. Here's an old mile post with a very worn geodetic marker on the top. And here's the old blacksmith shop. This is an old country store and it also served as the post office for the small town of Link.
Now we'll check out the back door where you can see the mailboxes and an old Coke sign. We're now walking out of the gated area to get to the old gas station. Looks like a couple of classic cars on the inside. Here is a 1930 Ford that is behind a gate, so this is about the best angle I can get. And I believe this one's a Pontiac. Here we have the doctor's office. Hope you enjoyed this like at Kennesburg Village. If you like tractors, there's a lot of them back through there. Even the Welcome Center and Gift Shop is a relocated vintage house. Alright, if you like this video, check out my CMID TN Presents Showcase. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.